Greetings, everyone. I'm continuing on with the stories from Romance of the Three Kingdoms and Zhuge Liang. In my last video on the subject, I discussed Kong Ming's famous empty fort strategy against Sima Yi, an incredible trick of reverse psychology. As a follower and student of Kong Ming's teachings, I feel this is a great opportunity to explain another one of his legendary schemes, borrowing arrows with thatch boats or straw boats. I'll be referring to a lot of the content in the classic novel, mostly from chapter 46. This particular strategy came to being during 208-209, at the time of the Battle of the Red Cliffs, otherwise known as Chi Bi, Cao Cao of Wei fighting against the much smaller allied forces of Wu and Shu Han. It was a naval battle, the largest naval battle in recorded human history. In order for the allies to stand any chance against the massive Wei fleet, they had to be resourceful and cunning. However, whilst preparation for the battle is happening, another rivalry is taking place not between Cao Cao and the allies, but with Zhuge Liang of Shu, Kong Ming, and Zhu Yu of Wu, Gong Jin. In the novel, Zhu Yu becomes extremely jealous of Kong Ming's abilities, not only envious of his talents, but also he becomes afraid of him. Gong Jin believes that one day, Kong Ming will become a threat to Wu, and something needs to be done to prevent this. Zhu Yu, although a brilliant man in his own right, allows personal feelings to cloud his judgment. Instead of focusing his energy on the up-and-coming battle, he obsesses over Kong Ming, always trying to outsmart him and failing miserably at it. These feelings of anger, fear and jealousy reach boiling point and Gong Jin begins devising a wicked plot to legitimately murder Zhuge Liang. Gong Jin decides to try and execute Kong Ming via military law. His plan involves giving Kong Ming an impossible task, a task so outrageously difficult, so utterly absurd, that even the most capable man would fail. Once this happens, the person would be punished according to military law, because they couldn't carry out the necessary duties. The punishment in this case is death. The task that Gong Jin assigns to the Shu genius sounds ludicrous. He invites all of his commanders to meet up, and he asks Kong Ming to join them. The two men discuss battle tactics. Gong Jing says, I am going to fight a battle soon on the water. What weapons are the best? Kong Ming replies, On the great river, arrows would be the best. Then Gong Jing says, We will need to fight Cao Cao on the great river with bows and arrows. Yet we haven't enough arrows to do this. I wonder if you would be so kind as to provide them for us. Doesn't sound too difficult, right? Just collecting a few arrows for the battle. But then he goes on. We will need 100,000 arrows. Yes. To make matters worse, he tells Kong Ming that he only has 10 days in order to complete the mission. How on earth could anyone accomplish this task in such a short window of time? Kong Ming, however, knows this is a trick. He knows Zhu Yu is trying to kill him whilst hiding behind the facade of military law. Here's where things get even more interesting. At this point, if you aren't aware of the story, you would probably think that Kong Ming would try to avoid this awful situation by simply declining the mission, but he doesn't. Instead, Kong Ming accepts it and responds, I think 10 days is too long. We will be attacked before then. I suggest three days instead. Three days to acquire 100,000 arrows at such short notice? Surely this is a suicide mission. Gong Jin responds quickly, do not make fun of me. And Kong Ming says, I wouldn't dream of it. If I fail to do this in three days, then I will bind myself under military law. I'll take my punishments as due. So, of course, Kong Ming is already turning the tables on Zhou Yu, but he doesn't see it yet. He still thinks that his plan is working. He is certain at this point that Kong Ming is heading for an execution, but you shouldn't mess with someone called the Crouching Dragon, should you? 
Kong Ming says, "In three days, send five hundred men to collect the arrows down by the river." After drinking a few cups of wine, they depart. All of this is entirely unnecessary. This is a result of Zhou Yu's bitter jealousy towards Zhuge Liang. After they depart, Lu Su goes to see Kong Ming. Lu Su, courtesy name Zi Jing, was a very well respected adviser of Zhou Yu. Kong Ming gives him very specific instructions on how to proceed with the gathering of the arrows. He says. Lend me twenty boats with thirty men to each boat. I want a thousand straw bales covered with black cloth. If my plan works, then we will have all of the arrows ready by the third day. But do not tell Zhou Yu; otherwise, this won't work. Lu Su goes to Gong Jin to inform him about the situation. Lu Su provided Kong Ming with the boats and the soldiers, but Kong Ming didn't do anything on the first day. Nor did he do anything on the second day. Very odd. You would think that Kong Ming would be frantically trying to succeed in his mission, due to the time constraints. Only on the very last day does he act. On the fourth watch of the third day, during the evening, Kong Ming asks Lu Su to accompany him on the boat. Why am I here? Says Lu Su to Kong Ming. Which he replies, to help me get the arrows, of course. Where do we get them from? Asks a bewildered Lu Su. Just follow me and don't ask any questions, says Kong Ming. So the two men head out into the night. During this night, an extremely thick fog was clouding the area. It was so dense that nothing could be seen at a distance. The fog here is key for the plan to actually work. We all know that Zhuge Liang is an expert in meteorology, the study of atmospheric sciences. The two men set off towards the enemy camp on the north shore of the Great River. At the time of the fifth watch, the boats arrived at their destination on the water in the middle of the fog near to the north shore. Kong Ming orders the men to beat drums and shout as loudly as they can in order to simulate an invasion. Due to the thick fog, Cao Cao's men are not able to see the boats, but they can hear the sounds. This is done to fool the enemy into thinking there is a massive incoming force of troops. Lu Su becomes terrified, fearing that the boats may be pursued by the enemy. But Kong Ming knows the enemy will not pursue during such a thick fog. Cao Cao hears the commotion coming from the river. And orders his archers to fire arrows towards the direction of the boats. Remember, all of the boats are covered in straw. Cao Cao orders all units to attack the boats, and very quickly, ten thousand archers and crossbowmen join the attack, firing off thousands and thousands of arrows into the boats. The attack was so severe it was like that of an arrow rainstorm, hitting the boats from all directions. Kong Ming orders his men to sail as close to the shore as possible and to turn the boats around, exposing the sides to the enemy in order to catch every single arrow. By now, you can understand the plan. Kong Ming took the boats out during the dead of night, used the fog to his advantage, and used the straw on the boats to collect thousands of arrows within minutes. The straw was there to absorb the arrows. All whilst Kong Ming was sitting inside, calm and composed, a genius plan. Cao Cao's archers could not see anything; they were basically shooting blind, so they just kept firing away, unaware of the plan in action. As the fog begins to clear and the sun begins to rise, Kong Ming orders all of the boats to return back to the safety of the camp. As he leaves the area, he shouts towards Cao Cao. Thank you, Prime Minister, for sending us the arrows. Oh, that's got to sting! By the time Cao Cao had figured out the plan, he tried to launch an attack, but it was too late. The operation was a success, and the arrows had already been collected. Cao Cao had to accept the fact that he had been fooled. Kong Ming explains to Lu Su, "Each boat has collected five to six thousand arrows." By my calculations, and without any cost to the South, we have more than one hundred thousand arrows required. Tomorrow, we will return them to the enemy. It's at this point where Lu Su asks Kong Ming how he knew about the fog. 
we get a valuable insight into Kong Ming's methods. He says, A truly great commander must understand the patterns in heaven and those on earth. He must understand how the gates open and comprehend the flow of yin and yang. He must know how to read and understand a map and have a profound brilliance in planning the disposition of his forces. Three days ago, I was able to calculate that there would be such a fog, which is why I told Gong Jin three days when he offered ten. Given that Gong Jin offered no practical help whatsoever, it was clear he meant to do away with me, but I am protected by the mandate of heaven, so there is nothing Zhou Yu can do to overthrow that. And that is how Kong Ming borrowed the arrows from Cao Cao. It's also important to mention that Zhou Yu could not kill Kong Ming because he succeeded in his mission, but later on down the line, the Allied forces did win against Cao Cao. So Zhuge Liang and Zhou Yu came together, they defeated Cao Cao, and it was a decisive victory for Xu and Wu against Mighty Wei. So thank you for watching this video. I'll have more Three Kingdoms videos very soon. Take care. I'll see you later.